Hi, I'm Nathan Jones. Today, you guys are hunting with me at the High Point Hunt Club in Breckenridge, Missouri. We're hunting with Brian Guffey, the owner and operator of High Point. This last season, he invited the crew to share in three different style hunts. On the first hunt of today's show, we're after turkey birds. We're hunting with a lady that's got a familiar face to many. It's Twyla Tanner from the TV show Survivor. She was a blast to hunt with, and it was great to be able to share in her first ever turkey hunt. We will then climb in the tree with Matt Owen and Jake Hadley, where they go head to head with a really cool Pope and Young Whitetail. After that, you guys better have your hunter safety orange on, because I tag along with Mike Hatfield and his awesome dogs as we take on the Bob White Quail. Oh, incidentally, the gun I'm packing on this quail hunt is the Austin and Halleck muzzleloader. The show today has a little something for everybody. This is Martin Archery's Wild Extremes. Martin Archery's Wild Extremes is being brought to you by Martin Archery, making the most accurate bows for over 50 years. Double Bull Archery, home of the Dark Archer. Volunteer Cabin Rentals in Chateau Bearden. Now you have a second home. With your host, Nathan Jones. And also brought to you in part by these other great companies. The Kankakee Marsh Hunt Club. Grim Reaper Broadhead. Carbon Tech Arrows. And Kicking Bear One-on-One. -on -one. We've had a lot of action. Of action. My God, I love this. <laughs> this segment of Martin Archery's Wild Extremes is being brought to you by Double Bull Archery, home of the Dark Archer. Tomorrow would be the start of Twyla Tanner's first ever turkey hunt, and she couldn't help but contemplate what the hunt here at the High Point Hunt Club would hold. Brian Guffey had worked hard at finding a roost tree, and now, here on the first morning, Twyla Brian and I sat in our double bull just a hundred yards away from a great bird, hoping that when he bailed out of the tree, he would fly our way. But as in most cases, this bird had other ideas. But, uh, I wasn't real hopeful he was going to bail out this way because his toes were pointed that way. A lot of times the beak will follow the toes. Yeah, it's just something to... So you can take that back home with you. Okay. Yeah, I'd use it. And if you use that three times, it's yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so now the waiting game began. We knew the gobbler had seen our hen decoy, but realized he had also seen the real thing down in the timber. So at this point, the thing to do was to wait for him to get done chasing girls in the woods and head back out into the food pond. Even though the whitetails were the first to appear in the food plot, Brian was positive it would be just a matter of time until we had turkeys showing up. 
Once the hens came out of the timber and started picking in the food plot, I had a feeling things were going to take a turn in Twyla's favor. Because we now had the best gobbler bait on the planet, right in front of our double bowl. On this morning, patience was the key. Brian had not issued a single call all morning. At different times in the turkey breeding season, if a hen feels that she is receiving competition from another hen, she will pull the gobbler away. So Brian's theory during this period is to use as little calling as possible and just let the turkeys do what turkeys do. As the hen fed at just five yards in front of our blind, the gobbler started to circle to cut her off. This was his final mistake. Because even though this was Twyla's first turkey hunt, it was not her first time to have a shotgun in her hands. As she opened the back of the blind to take a shot, she suddenly realized that the gobbler had rushed the hen and was now only five feet from the double bull. Awesome, it's a big bird. 10 inch beard, nice spurs. I, I'm excited, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's first bird, got shot up here at High Point. Um, Brian and I took a long time to get him, spent a lot of hours on him, but we got him. We nailed him. I am happy, I'm very happy. I've never, I haven't hunted for many, many, many years, and I've never heard hunted turkeys. And uh, this is my first one, so yeah, I'm quite excited about this. There was still one high point tradition for Twyla to honor. It's kind of like uh, when you come up here to high point and you get your first bird. You come up here and uh, it's a tribute to Al for all the things that he did to a lot of the people uh, that come up here and hunt. I know the very first time I met him, I never, I never will forget it. He was just one, one of the nicest persons to meet right off the bat. But you come up here and you get your first turkey, you pull one of the feathers off. Just grab a feather, pluck it out, and just lay it on the... Right. And just grab it right, just pull it out there. Just lay it on the... This is to you, Al. Another successful turkey hunt. The hunts at the High Point Hunt Club will continue when Martin Archery's Wild Extremes returns. This segment of Martin Archery's Wild Extremes is being brought to you by Martin Archery, making the most accurate bows for over 50 years. White-tailed deer are toward the top of most people's list of animals to hunt. One reason being, they are readily available in the vast majority of states. But another reason is the challenge of successfully taking a good buck, especially with archery equipment. Hunters buy the tens of thousands each year go into the woods in hopes that this year will be the one that yields a true trophy buck for them. And the High Point Hunt Club has trophy deer. Crew member Matt Owen along with Jake Hadley were set up in an oak grove where deer had been obliterating the mass crop. And just when it seemed that only mama does and babies were interested in nature's offering, this big guy showed up. A couple of grunts were offered and this awesome buck responded. The buck was positive that he had heard another buck in this stand of oaks and was determined to find out if indeed a doe was being pushed around. This is video proof why, when conditions are right, that a grunt tube can prove to be so deadly. 
this Pope and Young class buck was walking right into bow range of Jake. Now here is a great lesson for all of you hunters. If you are not totally confident in your shot, or if there is a question on the placement of the hit, always try to get a follow-up shot. Never quit trying. Jake's first shot had been a little high, so he knocked another arrow as quietly as he could to avoid further spooking the already alert buck and got ready to finish the game. Awesome duck. Oh, I gotta sit down. Oh, I'm supposed to be filming for Matt Owen tonight. We made an agreement that there's a real awesome, awesome buck in here. If we saw a mature buck, it was not him, and I, I really liked him. I was gonna shoot. So we saw this eight point come in, probably 130, real tall G2s, G3s. Hung up out here for a little bit. Then walked right down across the ditch, missed the first shot, shot high, rushed my shot. Thought he was running off, he ran right underneath us pretty much. Gave me another shot at about 15 yards. I've shot Matt's bow a few times at the house, comfortable with it. And it's, that's an awesome buck. And my first buck ever with the bow. And I'm supposed to be the cameraman. Thank you, God. Let's go check out our arrows. We just came down here and looked at our first arrow. Thought I had a clean miss over the top of his back. Come down here and look at the arrow. This is a great example of why you should never just trust your eyes and always check out all of your shots thoroughly. He's covered. Solid red. Good job, buddy. Oh. We went and looked at our first arrow. Awesome blood on that. Solid, solid. We went and looked at the second arrow. Good blood. The blood trail was just unbelievable on this guy. I mean, you literally did not have to look for it. You just you had to watch out where you're stepping. We didn't go 60 yards from the stand. Awesome buck. First ever bow kill. This segment of Martin Archery's Wild Extremes is being brought to you by Volunteer Cabin Rentals and Chateau Baird. Now you have a second home. All I have to talk about is you just drop it. We're here today at the High Point Hunt, Hunt Club with a friend of the show, Mike Hatfield, and you guys have seen us uh, hunt out at his place. But we came, uh, had him come east, we came west of Missouri. And we are going to get in the middle of some quail, Mike. You brought your dogs. You were good enough to bring your little bird dogs. And uh, these dogs you have, Mike, are truly world class. And it's been, I'm a whitetail hunter, mate, primarily. But uh, your dogs make it fun. Well, I'm so excited just to come out and get away from home. This is my first actual Missouri quail hunt. So Your wife don't even um, know you're gone, yeah. which is really cool. <laughs> Exactly. This terrain's kind of new for you. You're you're kind of oh, a flatlander. Yeah, we're wide open. If you, like I say, if you want a tree, you bring it with you. So, right. Um, real good cover. Excellent cover. It's it's going to be fun. This is kind of what these dogs are bred to do. I mean, they're primarily quail dogs down south. Okay. And golly, I'm just pretty excited to watch yeah. them work them. Let's try to shoot some quail with a black powder. You got it. You got it. The High Point Hunt Club caters to all types of hunting and hunters, with the upland enthusiast being no exception. Oop, there we, we got go. a point right there, guys. There we got a point. Look at there. Locked up. Here's a pair. Gotta be in here somewhere. They're right. Yep. Whoop. 
All right, here we go. Whoop. Just 200 yards into the field, and I had suddenly become one of the Upland crowd. I got him. Did you get him? Right there. All right. <laughs> The That's what I'm talking about. Black powder shotgun. There you go. And you did it. You, you actually doubted me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just as long as we have that on TV. Mike, look at the camera. Mike doubted me <laughs> with the shotgun. <laughs> with, with the muzzle loader. Here, Mike. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Very I mean, good. Shouldn't reload. <laughs> I got a quail over Hold here. On. Took a bath. This, you're gonna have to have some faith. You're, you're gonna be angry at the end of the day. You're gonna be furious with me. Mike Hatfield raises and trains bird dogs and has some of the best in the business. Today, they were definitely showing us their stuff. Whoop! It's right in front of her, about 10 feet, 15. With the combination of the thick cover provided by the fescue and the ability of Mike's dogs, the quail held tight. In fact, so tight, we had to practically step on them to get them to flush. Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Oh. <laughs> Even though one bird caught in a low-hanging tree, <laughs> Ginger was not about to be denied. Got it out of the tree. Look at her go. Look at that. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. To me, to me, to me. To me. These dogs really do it for the love of the game. As soon as a bird was delivered to the handler, they were instantly back on the job. <laughs> quick draw. Quick draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> so one of the cool parts about this bird hunting is uh, the dog work. I mean, you know, they come blitzing through here at 90 miles an hour, and it's just cool to see them walk up in like mid stride. They get the scent of those birds, and, and it is truly incredible. And we got them locked up over there again. So we're going to see if we can get in this brush. These quail are down in this brush, and it is hard to get into them, but we're going to get it done here. If you have never hunted birds over dogs, this right here is where the anticipation of the hunt builds. The dog's nose is on the ground trolling for scent. Actually, you might even equate it to fishing. When the dog goes on point, it's the same thrill as when your bobber goes under or when you feel that subtle bump on the line. You and the dog are a team, and once your quarry is located, now it's up to you to get him in the boat. <laughs> and that's why Sometimes two shots are better than one. I'm certainly glad I had Mike and Wayne along on this hunt to back me up and try to make me look better. Those boys can definitely shoot. Here came one more for the vest. Remember, to conserve energy, try conning your hunting partner into carrying all of the birds. It won't work on them if he or she is watching this hunt right now, but it is something to try out on the unwary. And once again, there was Wayne Betting cleanup for him. I made up my mind that on this next bird, I would definitely make it count. <laughs> Oh, 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 did you shoot, Wayne? No, and the thunder rolls. Did you see me hogging that little bird? <laughs> well, I, uh, oh, I that is good girl, awesome. Tiki. <laughs> well, Mike, it's been a great day, man, here at High Point. What a great day. The High Point Hunt Club has always been a place where people from different walks of life have come together collectively to hunt. But the experience goes further than just that. It's a lodge steeped in hunting tradition where the knowledge and skills of those who have gone before us are kept alive today. The High Point experience for many has turned into a lifelong bond. Maybe it's a person's very first thrill of hearing a gobbler up close, or the pulse pounding in their ears when having a great whitetail respond to the call. Or maybe it's the simple satisfaction of watching great dogs working tight cover. At High Point, you'll book as a hunter and leave as a friend. Martin Archery's Wild Extremes has been brought to you by 
Martin Archery, making the most accurate bows for over 50 years. Double Bow Archery, home of the Dark Archer. Volunteer Cabin Rentals in Chateau Bergen. Now you have a second home. And also in part by these other great companies, Grim Reaper Broadhead, the Kankakee Marsh Hunt Club, Carbon Tech Arrow, and Kicking Bear One-on-One. -on -one. Additional products have been provided by these companies. Man, we got us a monster. <laughs> this has been a Wild Serenade production.